that you all could be here today. So glad that you could tune in, whether you are watching us live or whether you're watching us live recorded. Whenever you hear this message, whenever you see this service, we're just glad that you would listen to us all around the world, all around the country, all throughout Southern California. Somebody say, you're welcome. Give God some praise. All of our members, all of our loved ones, we love, we welcome you, we welcome you, we love you, love you, love you. And uh, who's ready for the word? I am. Wait a minute, who's ready for the word? I am. What's going to help you? The word. Heal you? The word. Bless you? The word. Encourage you? The word. Enlighten you? The word. Give God some praise for his holy word. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray. We're going to get started. Brother, I'm going to do a little something different today. I'm not going to use that clock. I'm going to use this clock because this is a very important pastoral message that I'm going to have. Just add a, just a slight little bit more time on it. Okay, here we go. Let us pray. Father, we bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus. We magnify, we glorify your name. I thank you, Father, that your spirit resides on the inside of me. And I am not only dwelt by your spirit, but I'm led and empowered by your spirit. And I thank you that this time as I decrease, your spirit will increase. Speak in with and through me to these your precious people. And let every soul say, in the name of Jesus, I came to receive, I will receive revelation knowledge of the greatness, goodness, and faithfulness of God. And of who I am, what I have, and what I can do in Christ the Lord. God, you're going to get the glory. That's my story. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some praise one more time. Amen. Bless the Lord. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 23, and verse 4. Very familiar verse of Psalm. In fact, um, perhaps most people's favorite Psalm and most memorable Psalm. Somebody say amen. amen. And verse 4 reads as follows. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, y'all come on, say this with me, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-blessing, life-building message today, and it is simply entitled, We Are Going Through. Amen. We Are Going Through. Now, the first thing I want you to get today is that I really believe that all of life is a matter of perspective. It's all a matter how you're looking at anything. You know, if somebody gives you a glass and it has some water in it, you can look at that glass as half empty or half full. Say amen, somebody. It's the same amount of water, but your perspective makes all the difference in the world. So, to prove this point to you one more time, watch this. The title of today's message could be looked at one of two ways. First of all, it could be read as, watch this, we are going through. You know, you ever talk to people and say, how you doing? Man, I'm going through. You understand what I'm talking about? The emphasis on the, I'm going, I, the emphasis on the through. Like, I'm in the middle of some stuff, and all I'm doing is focusing on the stuff. But see, you can take the exact same words, and instead of emphasizing, we are going through, change it around and watch this. We are going through. Say that with me. We are going through. Give God some praise if you understand the difference. Amen? The emphasis is not on what we're in. The emphasis is in that we're what we're going to go through. We are going through. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus predicted the pestilence, the disease that we're presently facing. He said that there would be pestilence. Amen. Amen. But guess what? Not only did he predict the disease, he also predicted that it would pass. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, this too, this too shall pass. Shall pass. No, 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 I to my mom. Say, this too, this too shall, pass. shall pass. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6, it says, Jesus is speaking, and he's telling them about the end of times, and he says that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Turn your head and say, don't be troubled. Now see, Jesus said, don't be troubled. That means you have the ability, it's like the man said uh, the, in, in Shakespeare, to be or what? Not or not to be. to be. And Jesus said, don't be. 
He said, don't be troubled. Say it again. Say, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. He said, for all these things must come to pass. Look at that. You sit up there wondering, why is this happening? Somebody said, because Jesus said it would. He said, all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, that was a very important point. A lot of people are at the stores right now. That the lines are going out the stores. And somebody told me somebody broke out of shank and cut somebody and all these kinds of things. But what I'm trying to tell you is they're doing that because they're, they're reacting as if this is the end of the world. But I need you to know today that based on the word of God, this is not the end of the world. As you say, how do you know, Pastor? Because he just said, but the end is not yet. Watch this, verse 7. He says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences. There it is. How many of you know this is not the first pestilence? How many of you know this is not the first uh, pandemic, uh, global pandemic? You know, they had, name some of the other ones they had. SARS, H1N1, Ebola. Come on. And, and this, they say that about every five years they get a pandemic. It's just that somebody in the government didn't get the memo that it was going to happen again. And they didn't prepare for it. They didn't put the money down for it. And now we're paying for it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at somebody said, but that's okay. that's okay. Jesus is still Lord. <laughs> so, so it says pestilences, <clears throat> excuse me, earthquakes in various places. Verse 8. Look at verse 8. What does it say? It says, all these things are the what? Beginnings of sorrow. You got to put the end of verse 7 and the end of verse 8 together. Excuse me, the end of verse 6 and the end of verse 8 together. The end of verse 6 says, but the end is not yet. And the end of verse 8 says what? Oh. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Let me translate that to you. This is not the end because these are the things that have to happen before the great tribulation. I'm going to say it again. This is not the great tribulation, but these are the things that are the prelude to the great tribulation. God's trying to get, and why, and why must they happen? I'm glad you asked. They must happen to get us ready to get more souls into the kingdom. Because last time I looked, folk are ignoring God. Last time I looked, they're more concerned about basketball, football, shopping, the beach, and everything else but God. They're, they're in the concert but God. And God said, well, you know what? He said, your decision that you're going to make is going to have eternal consequences. So I'm going to give you one more chance before the great tribulation and before time is up. Did somebody say amen? Amen. Now, now, here's the thing. How should we deal? This is the big question of the day. How should we deal with this pandemic, this coronavirus, until it passes? We already established in the word that it shall pass. Can I get an amen? amen. Did we see that in the word? Yes. Jesus said it will pass. This is not the last thing that's going to happen. So if it's not the last thing that's going to happen, it means it came, but it came to pass. Somebody say, it came to pass. It came to pass. Everybody say, it came to pass. It came to pass. No matter how bad it looks right now. Do you know what it means when it says, no matter walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Do you know what that means? It means it's not death, it's the shadow of death. It looks like you're going to go down and go out and go under. It's a shadow of death, but it's not death. In other words, one translation says it like this. It says, no, I walk through the valley of the deepest, darkest valley. Look like you got no life, no way out, but you need to understand you're not gonna go down, you're going through. So we're going through. Say we're going through. Say we're going through. Church, church, as Christians, we must, this is the key. I ask the question, how should we deal with this while we're going through? That's the that's the big question, right? That's what we all need to know. Well, I'm so glad Holy Ghost tapped me on the shoulder, told me to keep the church open so that we could hear the answer right here. Here's the answer. How should we deal with this pandemic while we are going through? The answer is, as Christians, this is it now, as Christians, we must have earthly wisdom and heavenly faith, even as Jesus did. There it is, right there. Somebody say, earthly wisdom. Say, and, and heavenly faith, heavenly faith. Just, like Jesus. just like Jesus. Man, I like this. I like this. In other words, God is trying to tell you it's not one or the other, it's both. You have to use earthly wisdom, but you also have to exercise and walk in heavenly faith. And Jesus himself did this. 
You say, where did Jesus do this? I give you a couple of examples. First of all, uh, you know, uh, when when uh, the people came to Jesus, they asked him, are you uh, going to pay your taxes? You know, Jesus was all about heavenly faith, right? So he could have just said, oh, I don't deal with earthly stuff like that. He said, no. You know what he said? He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. You know what that means? He means it meant that deal with the natural things with natural means and deal with the spiritual thing with spiritual means. Can I get an amen? Somebody? Amen. Well, I can give another example. When Jesus, oh, hmm. Jesus, how many of you all know that Jesus, uh, how many of y'all know that there was a great disease during the time of Jesus' uh, earthly ministry? It was called leprosy. And folk didn't want to touch nobody. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Oh, you got luck, you got the leprosy. Oh, I said, hey, I'm getting away from you. I'm doing the MC hammer on you. I'm getting away from you. You got leprosy. Listen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 and 2 says that Jesus looked to the leper and he touched him. He, the leper asked him, he said, he said, he said, you will, he, he said, you can heal me if you will. And Jesus said, I will. Jesus will. Come on now. Somebody said, Jesus will. Jesus said, I will. And he touched him. And today after service, anybody that needs hands laid on them, I'm going to touch them and lay hands on them in the name of Jesus, the elders, my wife, and I. And, and, and we, if you have any kind of infirmity, don't have to be, you, you know, there was somebody who died yesterday when we went to a funeral. That wasn't coronavirus. That was a death from another thing. So if you have any illness, we still believe that in the name of Jesus, we can lay hands. Come on, church. Talk to me a little bit up in here. We can lay hands on the sick and what? The sick. Shall become. Jesus laid that hand on that leopard and he was healed. But now let me give you another. In other words, what was the spiritual? What was the natural? The spiritual was his faith. The natural was he touched him. Yeah. Somebody say, that's natural. I mean, he could have, you know, remember he healed the centurion servant just by his what? Just by his word. But Jesus touched that man. Oh, and by the way, the woman touched the hem of his garment, right? And said, if I could just touch him, I'd be healed. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is Jesus dealt with the spiritual and the natural. There was a time when there were 10 lepers and Jesus, now in this particular case, he didn't touch them. He just told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. Why did he say that? Because that was the Old Testament law. In other words, let me give you the example of what you need to get from that. It was like saying, you are healed, but go to the doctor and confirm it. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, uh, this is Luke chapter 17. While they were walking to the priest, like while they were going to the doctor to take that MRI, to take the blood test, to, take the, to confirm that they were healed, he said, they were healed. But it was only one of them that came back and thanked Jesus. Church, you might get the vaccine on this thing, but you better give Jesus the praise. Come on, brother. I'm here to tell you right now. You can do that natural stuff if you want to, but you know the doctors are practicing even right now. Uh, 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 the Lord Jesus is working and anointing somebody's mind to come up in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that Jesus right now, he, the Bible says that my Lord is at the right hand of the Father and he's praying. He's anointing some doctor's mind that they'll come up. With, they say it's going to take a while for the vaccine. No, 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 no. Lord Jesus, Daddy, Father, Holy Ghost is going to anoint somebody's mouth and they're going to come up with that answer vaccine louder than anybody say in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Say and it is so. Amen. 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 Now watch this. Watch this. So, so we must do those things that reflect uh, wisdom in the natural and we must do those things that reflect faith in the spiritual. Amen. Amen. Somebody say both. both. Okay, so let's talk about the natural first. Let's talk about the natural first. In the natural, we must, in the natural, we must do those things that the, the CDC, the Center of Disease Control, and the government and all the health professionals are advising us to do. Now, there's a whole list that I got. Now, it's not an exhaustive list. By that, I mean, you can, you can always add some more to this list. Let me read it real quick. Everybody knows that you got to wash your hands for 20 seconds, wash with soap and water, can I get an amen? amen. Somebody say, I never wash my hands. Come on, somebody. Say I've never had. Say I've never washed my hands so much. 
I, maybe I should get some stock and some lotion, because I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, good God Almighty, huh? I mean, you, and then watch this, avoid putting your hands on your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Now, now, church, you know, you, it's easy to say that, but you, how many of you find your hand on your face? Watch this one. How many of you, see, if you grew up in my generation, and you call, the natural thing you do is you, they, our parents told us to cover our mouth. Now, the next generation, they told them to cough in the elbow. Now, just today, somebody told me that, yeah, but that's not that great because usually when the kids cough in the elbow, they don't bring it all the way up. So it just goes in the air anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, but you try, somebody's got, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do as much as you can naturally. Watch this. Sanitize all services, bathrooms, and phones, especially cell phones. Think about this. We're in a generation now, everybody has a cell phone. Baby, come out the room. Hey, what's up? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? Everybody got a cell phone. So, but, and then when you take a cell phone, what do you do? You put it down on all these surfaces, right? Yes. Guess what? Somebody say natural wisdom. Natural wisdom. Get you a, a sanitized wipe and start cleaning your cell phone because you don't realize. You're thinking about surfaces like kitchen surfaces, countertops, but guess what? Your cell phone goes all on those surfaces and you touch it in. Somebody say, thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Drink lots of water during the day. How many of y'all have heard that? Because what, it says the water flushes the germs out of your mouth. Build up your immune system with vitamin C, zinc, and all those other kinds of things. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, somebody say, do it in the bump. We bring the bump back. Do it in the bump. You know, we bring the bump back. We got the elbow bump now, right? My wife was up here cleaning with the uh, sisters yesterday, cleaning up the church. She said it wasn't just the elbow bump. The sisters was doing the bump. They were like, it's, it's called the sister bump. The brothers, you know, it was the sister bump. They said, hey, girl, how you doing, bro? She said somebody did that the boom and throw flew across the uh, bed. But praise the Lord. Amen. But 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 uh now now here's the thing what you talk. Somebody say natural, natural. Advice. advice. Say natural wisdom. natural wisdom. Now I was looking at my cell phone just this morning, because I've got these alerts on there, like I'm sure you do, CNN alerts, etc. And you know what the alert says? It says something that I just said to the leadership this morning. I told the leaders, I said, leaders. From now until otherwise notified, we're going to suspend, you know, uh, the food ministry, hospitality ministry, and just, just to be on the safe side. And I said, and you know why? I said, because in Italy, where there are 60 million people on lockdown, there are only basically three commercial industries that are open. And that is grocery stores, pharmacies, and banking. Now, here's the point to that story. If it's only grocery stores, pharmacies, and banking open, what's closed? restaurants, bars, eating places. All kind of eating places are closed. Guess what? This morning I looked on the, the, the news and it said that the guy Fauci, he said, well, that's not off the table. That's, that's the, you know, the hidden language for saying that's coming. In other words, you better start learning. Uh, if you can't cook, you better get somebody to cook. You better, you, when they say you better ask somebody, you better get it. Don't, don't, we're in a society where everybody's Uber eating and Postmating and, and Grubhubbing. Guess what? They had a thing on the news where it said that the folk was eating your french fries on the way and digging in their nose at the same time. You better be sure. You better, like I said, you better, listen, you better get you a cookbook, Google it. <laughs> Dude, Get you a YouTube video and learn how to cook. Buy your own food, wash it really good, make sure you cook it really good, and get in the habit of eating your own food. And that's a good natural wisdom. Give God some praise. Amen. 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 I'm moving through this because I want to get to the good stuff. All right. Now listen. Of course, we know some other advice says. Next slide. That if you are experiencing coronavirus symptoms, uh, no, no, no. Slide before that. Slide before that. If you don't mind. Is that if you're experiencing some symptoms, then uh, uh, then you should uh, shorten the support. What are the coronavirus symptoms? Come, oh, it's like, it's like, okay, give me, give me a pause on that one. What are the symptoms? The symptoms are things like shortness of breath, right? Coughing, sneezing. One of the key symptoms is temperature, a fever over 100.4, right? Okay, so isolate yourself, call your doctor. That's all good. Those are all natural things. What's the problem? They ain't got no test. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, the tests are not totally rolled out yet, right? But we believe in the name of Jesus is coming, right? Yeah. So these are all natural things. And of course, if you've been exposed, you know, isolate yourself, contact your doctor. What am I saying? I'm saying you do the best you can, especially if you know you have some underlying 
medical condition. Now let's get to the however. Somebody say, however. however. Say it again. However. however. One more time for the Holy Ghost. However. 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 Notwithstanding all that natural stuff I just said, while we should exercise earthly wisdom, at the same time we must exercise heavenly faith. Amen. That's the key. That's the key, y'all. I mean, if, if there's one thing that I learned this last week, and it's just been seven days since I saw y'all like this, I told you I've never washed my hands so much in all my life, right? But here's the funny reason why I've never washed them so much in all my life. As soon as I wash them, I touch something else that's, that's suspect. I mean, the moment I wash them, here I go to the door. The moment I wash them, I gotta take out the trash. The moment, I mean, it's like, anybody else with me? The moment you wash them, you say, whoa, I just touched that, I gotta go back. What am I trying to tell you? You do your, the best, but let God do the rest. God, you do your part, but God, you better, you better trust God to do his part. Listen, I need you to understand that this time of pestilence is actually this church generation's greatest yeah. hour. I'm going to say that again. This is our church generation's greatest hour and greatest opportunity to prove our faith and give God the glory. I don't know if you thought about it like that. I don't know if you thought about it like that. I'm going to say that again. This is the church's greatest hour to prove our faith, and to give God the glory. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the fact that those of us who know the Lord, you know what we've been doing? We've been reading uh, stories in the Old Testament. We've been reading about the three Hebrew boys and what they did when they had to go in the fire. We've been reading about Moses and what he did when he was trapped between Pharaoh's army and the, and the deep blue sea. We've been reading all these stories about uh, Jehoshaphat and what they did when a big multitude came on there. But church, I'm here to tell you, now is your Red Sea. Now is your fiery furnace. Now it is your uh, great multitude. And then, oh, oh, one more for you. Uh, now is your time, like Esther says, hey, listen, if I perish, I perish. But guess what? I'm going to obey God. Give God some praise. You know what? Hey! Hey! I got eternal life insurance. You know what I'm saying? If it, listen, it, first of all, either you believe this Bible, you either believe that everything in this Bible is true or don't believe none of it. It's time to fish and cut bait, y'all. Either you believe it or you don't. Which is it? Because the, my Bible says that I have already passed from death to life. My Bible says I already have eternal life. I'm not, I'm not like the Jehovah's Witness. I'm not out there trying to work it and to work my way into heaven. I have a place reserved in heaven. It's already a set thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, "Let come on somebody, let not your heart be troubled. John chapter 14, verse 1. Somebody say, let it not. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. That's the problem. Some people want to believe in God, but they don't want to believe in the Son of God. And who told you to believe in the Son of God? God is his only son. I was at that funeral yesterday. I almost was, man, I was, whoo, Jesus. Edda, I was trying to strap myself down there when that man got up there. Man got up there talking about, well, I read the Quran and I read the Bible and I read they all the same. I said, that devil is a lie. And, 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 and I was just sitting up there going, hold me back, Jesus. Hold me back. I just said, please, please. Hold I said, oh, please, please. But I had talked with the preacher of the hour. I had already talked with Brother Kennedy, and I and he had already confirmed with me that he was going to bring it, and he did bring it, and I was glad. But I said, "But brother, I, I'm young enough to remember Freddie Glass and, and WrestleMania. Now, if you need to, if you need to tag me, if you need to tag me, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. You just, just tag me. I'm coming in there. On that oh, no, you ain't. You're not going to sit up in the house of God and blaspheme my God talking about he just like Muhammad. He just like a dude. Oh, no. And get up there and start, oh, no, 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 no. But the brother, he took that business. So I was cool. I was cool. I let him go and have his business. Oh, man. I mean, it all that. No, 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 no. Tag me in. Somebody say tag me in. Oh, praise the Lord. Church, church, this is the church's finest hour. I remember... I'm thinking of my former Episcopal pastor. I've been thinking about him a lot these last few days because it's something that he shared with me and really the Holy Ghost brought it back to me. There was a time in the ministry where they were having a problem 
with uh, their denomination. And they were trying to basically, uh, well, they, they were in a situation where their denomination uh, told them to do certain things. And he said, well, no, and we're going to separate from you all. And they said, well, you can't separate from us. And they said, the property that you have is our property. He said, the property that you have is our property. How we doing? We okay? He said, the property that you have is our property. So what, make, long story short, what happened was his denomination, they went to law enforcement, they hired, they got the sheriff and everything, and they told them, they said, now come Sunday morning, you got to get out of that property. I mean, it was like Sunday morning, you got to get out of there. And he said, now, he said, you know, he said, I've been reading the Bible all my life. He said, but that Sunday, praise the Lord, I need to change. Okay, praise God. All right, we're going to get it together. Right here, praise his holy name. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise All Lord. right, thank you for the steward right here. Amen. Thank you, steward. All right, you can bring it down a little bit. It's hot. Okay, so that Sunday morning, he didn't ask anybody to come to church. He, he, they said, if, you, if you're in that temple on Sunday morning, everybody who's in there is going to be arrested. And go to jail. Somebody say jail. jail. He didn't ask the church to show up that Sunday morning. He announced to the church, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm going to have the church open. Well, that's, you know what? That's exactly how I felt this week. Mm -hmm. right. I said, I, in my mind, I was like, I sent y'all a memo. I said, the church is going to be open. I'm not mad at nobody who didn't come. I love everybody, wherever you are. But I'm help telling you right now, God said, keep this church open and be here. And I, if they came in here and said, you got to go to jail, then guess what? They're going to have to take me. Because at some point, you got to recognize who is God and who is the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, that just came back to me this week. And, and it was the beginning of a worldwide ministry. When he did that, they, they, they ended up getting an injunction, Ken, and they stopped them from taking them to jail. But the people saw, say, what am I trying to tell you? That's it's it, one Richard. thing on. to study about the faith of the Old Testament heroes. It's another thing to prove your faith out today in the face of fear and doubt and odds that look like it's going to take you down. You, at some point in your life, you're going to have to, it, it, the Bible says it. It says, having done all, you, I need to hear that song next week. It says, you got to stand. Come on, somebody. I, having done everything, somebody say, stand. 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 You know, having done all, you got to stand. At some, at, because if, if your, listen, if your faith if you, even Martin Luther King knew that. Yes, he sir. said, if you're not willing to die for something, you're not willing to live for anything. And I mean, during the civil rights movement, we had, to, we had to get to a place where we said, you know what? Enough is enough. This is what's right. This is what's wrong. And if I got to go to jail, I'm going to jail. Now, those were civil rights. I'm talking about my spiritual rights, and I'm going to stand. How about y'all? I got to stand at church. I got to stand. Amen. I said, I got to stand. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 and 10, it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength or faith is small. In other words, why do these things happen? To test your faith. It is there to test everybody's faith. I'm serious. I'm, like I said, you say, well, pastor, but you, you just saying that, but see, I, 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 I know that I have to use wisdom. I said we can use wisdom, but I'm here to tell you, now watch this. You can wash your hands as much as you want, you can do like some of these uh, sisters at the stores and wear some gloves when you come out. But guess what? At some point, you are going to have to come out your house. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, you can stay in your, you can, you can listen to what they say on TV. You can say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in, I'm going 14 days, and then next week they might say a month. Uh -huh. But at some point, you go, I mean, oh, I don't have to come out my house because I can just go on Amazon. I was on Amazon this morning. You can't get no toilet paper, you can't get no paper towels on Amazon. Did you hear me? At some point, and then when you go out your house, well, if I go out my house, I'm going to wear gloves. I got news for you. You can wear gloves and you can wear masks, but the lines that are out there, you, you, you worrying about social distancing in the church, you got a person in front of you, a person in back of you, and guess how long you're going to be standing in line? About as long as you sit in church. Come on, church. Talk to me. Talk to me, somebody. Ultimately, our faith, our trust must rest in God and not in how many times we wash our hands or how much we try to distance ourselves socially. I'm not saying you should not use good sense 
and natural means as best as you can. But that's not where your faith really lies. Right. That's not the ultimate protection of you. You can get, listen, you can do all that stuff. And because you love your grandkids, they come over your house and you can get it from them if you ain't covered by the blood. But child, honey, if you covered by the blood of the lamb, God will make sure that you come out all right. Somebody say, we are going through. We are going through. Church, we really can't stop touching things because we are a touching society. You, you, have you all realized that? Everything now is touch. You know, it used to be you just, but everything's a screen. Everything's a, a keypad, a pen. And it's just, so you're just going to have to believe in the Lord. No matter how dark things may look, seem or sound, we must choose not to fear. Say, I won't fear. Let's go back to our foundational text. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen to what he said. I will fear no evil. You know, that's a, a, a very familiar psalm to most of us. How many of y'all know that by heart? Most of us know that by heart, right? Guess what? We've said it many times. But the Lord has a way of magnifying something when you really need it. I've said that many times. And then the Lord just showed me. He said, look at that. I said, what, Lord? He said, look at that. He said, it says, I will fear no evil. Did you notice how I uh, capitalized the word will? Uh -huh. uh -oh. That means that it's a matter of choice. Come on, come on. You have to choose not to fear. That's it. You have to understand that if, that if God didn't give you fear, uh -huh. but the devil is trying to give you fear, yeah. you have to choose to reject it, detect it and reject it, and say, no, no, not today, devil. Somebody say, not today, devil. Say, not today, devil. <laughs> fear is an evil spirit. That's why 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given you the spirit of fear. Somebody say, it's an evil spirit. It's an evil spirit. Say, I don't choose it. Uh-huh. Amen. So, like, why should we choose faith over fear? Why should we reject it? Why should we choose faith over fear? And here's the answer. Because God is with us. The scripture says, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will. Notice he said, I. It's personal. Somebody said, I, I will not fear any evil. Now watch, why, why, why? He answers it right there at the end of verse 4. For you are with me. I don't know if you've seen Pastor's post recently in Facebook, but if you haven't, go on my Facebook page, Walter Tucker, and look at it, and it's entitled, He is with you if you're with him. The Lord showed me that all throughout the Bible, you know this, minister, all, with, come on, come on, Ken, with me, Without me, with, with, with me, without me, with him, you win. Without him, you lose. Yes, sir. And, 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 yes. and all throughout the Bible, if you look at it, every time God was with them, they always won. Crazy. When they tried to go without him, Why when they tried not? to go to AI, with, you know, when they went to Jericho and they were outnumbered and outmanned and outwalled, but God was with them, the walls came down. When they went to go fight the little AI folk, and it was none of them, but, but God wasn't with them. Why wasn't God with them? Because they didn't stop to praise him. They didn't stop to worship him. They didn't stop to acknowledge him. If you will acknowledge me in all your way, not some of your ways, in all your way, I will direct you back. This morning, this morning when we were in high praise and worship, I heard the voice of God say to me, praise steals the enemy. Praise steals. It, it, it causes, it breaks the, the anointing, breaks the earth. We were praising God uh, better than a football game. We were praising God better than the Super Bowl. We were praising God better than a Beyonce concert. We were praising God. Come on, young people, help me out. Come on, somebody, talk to me, talk to me. I mean, we were out of our minds praising God. And God said, here come the power. Here come the power. Here come the power. Praise him. God inhabits the praising of his people. Amen. Church, I need you to know that as long as God, somebody say, God, God you, are with me you are with me and my family, and my family. in Jesus' name. I'm just, I'm just, see this tag team. Now, can I go in? Can I go in? Can I go in? She just tagged me. Boom. I'm, go, tag me, tag me. Tag me. Boom. Okay, tag me, tag me. Boom. Okay, she gave me a bump. She can give me the other bump, too. But anyway, so she just tagged me because Re Reverend started it when she said death and life were in the power of the tongue, right? So she just tagged me, and guess what? Uh, I've taken it right from her. That is 
Say with your mouth. Yes. Say it again. Say, God, God. I decree and declare, I decree and declare that you are with me because I'm, I'm with you. And you're with me. You're with my family. You with my finances, you with my household, you with my body. In Jesus' name, give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, as long as God is with you, what you need to know is he's more than anything against you. If God be for you, who or what can be against you? Can I get an amen? Is that the word of God? Romans chapter 8. If God be for you, who can be against you? Show, show famine, show pestilence, show corona, show SARS, show Ebola, show any of that stuff. If God be for you, but if God ain't for you, now that's a different story now. You, you, you're fighting on your own. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Say amen. amen. Church, if we truly trust God, he must, we must, listen now, here's where it gets good. I'm going to bring it on home now. If we truly trust God, somebody say truly. truly. Say it again, say truly. truly. If we truly trust God, we must stop speaking, we must not stop, excuse me, we must not stop speaking faith and victory. Yeah. If we truly trust God, we must not stop. In other words, we, we should have been speaking it all along. Somebody say, don't stop. No, I mean to say, don't stop. If you really trust God, just because this stuff is happening, that's not the time to stop now. We must not stop. We must be speaking Psalm 91, right? Yeah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. You know what that means? Under the protection of the Almighty. Say, say I will not fear the terror by night, nor the arrows by day, nor the pestilence in darkness. I will not fear. A thousand shall fall at my side. I, you know why I like that? Because it's trying to tell you that if you look on CNN and say, this is how many cases, this is how many people die. You say, but it will not come nigh me. You say, it shall not come nigh me in the name of Jesus. It, either you're going to have faith or you're not. Either you're going to have faith or you're not. There ain't no, either you're pregnant or you're not. Either you're pregnant with faith or you ain't no, well, I'm half pregnant. No, you either, it is you is or it is you ain't. If you either you're in the faith or you're not. Either you really believe what God said or you don't. He said in his word, and the last time I looked, God can't lie. So, you know, God, listen, God is the truth and he cannot lie. The devil is a lie and he cannot tell the truth. Can I get an amen? Everything come out of the devil's mouth is a lie. You're going to die. Somebody say, I shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. Amen to God. Now watch this. We must not stop laying hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. Just because it's coronavirus, what you going to stop? That, that, you know what? People need healing and they want to close the church, which is the house of healing. Come on now. Yeah. Somebody was telling me this joke. <laughs> it was a funny joke too. He said they said it was an Indian. You know they believe in doing the the, the rain dance. They as an Indian they had problems with the you know in the in that particular part of the country and had been no rain for quite a while. And they said we know what we got to do we got to do a rain dance and we're gonna call upon you know the, the, the great spirits and bring some rain. And they got out there and they they, they said they're gonna do a rain dance the next day. And the guy went out there to see if they were there. He said hey. Where is everybody? He said, Chief Running Bull, what, what happened? I thought you were going to be uh, out there doing the rain dance. He said, yeah, well, the rain dance was called off due to inclement weather. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? We can't, we, can't have, we can't have healing in the church due to disease. You, you'll get it next week. Anyway, but, but what I'm trying to tell you is that's the reason we're in business. Church, we must not stop, stop laying hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. We must not stop tithing and giving. Oh, we there's a run on the stores and, 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 and I got to stock up and everything else. But I can't pay my tithes this month. Well, it seemed to me that you, you're going to offend the, the, the source of your life. 
the source of your life. He's the one who, listen, you, you, when you have faith in God and he's the source of your life, the brook might dry up, but he'll tell you to go over here to a widow woman and the oil will flow freely and the meal will flow. You don't know how he's going to do it. You don't know when he's going to do it. You don't know who he's going to use to do it, but you just need to know. Oh, let me give you a good example of this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I went uh, the other day, I was going to Sam's Club. And I said, well, let me go on over to Sam's Club. I got to get me some water. And I went on to Sam's Club, and I went in there, and they said, I looked, it was no water. I went and talked to the employees. I said, when's, I said, where's the water? They said, brother, are you kidding? They said, ain't no water. I said, when's the water come in? They're like, you can forget it. And I just, I, I said, wow, no water. They don't know when water's coming in. Now, here's the key, though. The key is when I walked in Sam's Club, you know what you do when you walk in Sam's Club, you show them your member card, right? So I showed the young lady, young Hispanic lady, my member card. But you know what else I showed them, right? I pulled out that track and I gave her that track and I said, God loves you. And then I couldn't talk to her long because you know there was a line of people coming in. But because there was no water, I ended up leaving Sam's Club. But instead of leaving out of the exit, I left out of the entrance where I came in with the same young lady. Somebody say, led by Holy Ghost. So I walked out and uh, I saw her and I said, now you're going to read that, right? And she said, yes. I said, oh, by the way, I said, I forgot to ask you the question. Somebody say, the question. I said, do you love God? And she said, yes, I do. And I said, well, praise God. If you were to die today, God forbid, do you know for sure if you go to heaven? No, I don't. But you can know. Let's pray. I led her to the Lord right there. I didn't get any water, but I was sent there to bring her to the Lord. Give God some praise. I was sent there to bring her to the Lord. Oh, and get, huh? Yeah, she gave, she got, I wasn't there to get water. I was there to give living water. I was there to give her some water. I was like Jesus was the woman of the well. I was there to give her. If you knew, basically that's how it, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for some water. Because I have the living water. Now, what? The story gets better. So then I leave there, and I was thinking about Brother Daryl, and I could hear Brother Daryl in my ear saying, Pastor, now you know, we got to have some batteries for the microphones. And so I could hear the little voice by the way of the Holy Spirit saying, pick up the batteries for the microphone. And the Spirit told me, go to Home Depot and pick up. Don't be standing in this long Sam's Club lot, because they were all the way down the, 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 the whole store. And all I needed was a few batteries, right? I said, I'm not standing in line. I said, Holy Ghost, what, what you want me to do? I said, go to Home Depot. I go to Home Depot. I walked in Home Depot to get these batteries, and sure enough, they had the batteries, and guess what else? Water. They had water. Praise the Lord. They had water. They had water. And then all the story is better than that. Somebody say, go, Jesus, go. Jesus. Then I walked in. The water was there. But they had a sign on the water that said two cases per customer. Two cases per customer. And I looked at that and, I, and, and the Holy Spirit said to me, don't accept that. He said, you here now. Get, get, get some more. And so I went to the guy. Do you any, do I have any Star Wars fans here? Any Star Wars fans? You remember when Obi-Wan and Obi said, these are not the droids that you were looking for. I said, Surely I can have more than two cases of water. And they said, yes, you can have two, more than two. You can have four cases of water. And I said, thank you very much. And these are not the droids that you were looking for. So, that, so I just took the four cases of water, went up to the counter, and the lady stopped me at the counter and said, you, oh, you can't have uh, four cases. They, they, they're, they're on us, you know, telling us that we can only sell two. And I said, oh, no, the man over there told me I could have four cases of water. Yes, the man over there told you that four gifts of work. You can just go. Praise the Lord. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Church, we must not stop laying hands. We must not stop praising God. We must not stop tithing and giving. We must not stop assembling so that we can be encouraged by the body of Christ. We must not stop preaching the gospel. We must not stop being a blessing to others. Satan's whole agenda. If you have not gotten your eyes open on this, the whole thing is against the kingdom of God. It goes directly against two things. Number one, don't go to church. Don't, now, anybody who's not going today, I still love you. And eventually, you're going to be here and come back. But I'm here to tell you the truth in love. That's the agenda in the spirit. Don't let them go to church. 
they can go anywhere else. The guy told me, the governor talked about don't go to church, but, the, but the, he didn't say nothing about the, the bowling alley. Uh -huh. There's more germs in the bowling alley than you can shake a stick at, man. I think they're all in it. You wear somebody else's shoes, the athlete's feet, in, and then you, everybody's sticking their fingers in them little holes and everything. You think they clean them little holes like that? And like, but, but you go to bowling alley, but don't go to church. Why? Because God, he knows, the God of this world knows the power is in worship, corporate worship. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity, Psalm 133 and 1. For then I will command the blessing, and I will let the oil run down. From Aaron's head to the beard and to the skirt to everybody so they can be a part. And then the second thing the devil wants to do, not only does he want to stop you from going to church, he wants to stop you from talking to other people. Uh -huh. I'm here to announce today that in the midst of coronavirus and in the midst of some rains out there that seem like floods, in the midst of long lines and people being nervous and scary and everything else, God used me to lead six people to the Lord this week, and I want to give him praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Church, we are going through. Not we're going through. We're, we are going through. We're going to get through this. We're going to reject the lies of the devil. We're going to accept the truth of God. The good, listen, the bad news is we are going through, but the good news is we are going through. If we use earthly wisdom and heavenly faith, we will go through this. We will enjoy the victory and God will get the glory. My time is up and I thank you for yours. God bless you in the name of Jesus. We're going to get through this. This too shall pass. It came to pass. We will not fear. We will not fear. Because God told us not to. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, say to pray. We never want to take it for granted that everybody under the sound of my voice has a knowing, living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, I'm here to tell you that God is so good. That the only things, I, I was listening to a man today on the on the TV, it was a broadcast, and he was an ex-motorcycle uh, rider, an ex-game banger, an ex-everything. He just right. did a whole lot of bad stuff. He said, he said when people right. tried to tell him about Jesus, he said he would cuss them out. Mm -hmm. He would cuss them out and he'd knock them out. Mm -hmm. And then one day, he was up in Oakland, and the police put a gun up to his head. And he said, he said it was a 357, and he said that he had his gat on him. He had his gun on him. And the guy said, just reach for it, fool. And he knew right then that that could have been his last day. Mm -hmm. And the next day, his friend told him, he said, man, he said, you know what your problem is? He said, all you need is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, all you need is Jesus. He said, and all the times people told him that, he had rejected it. But on that particular day, after that, after he saw his life flash in front of his face, and that man told him, all you need is Jesus, the light came on, and he realized he's right. Mm -hmm. All I need is Jesus. Church, today, all we need is Jesus. Give him some praise. All we need is Jesus. If you're here today, or if you're out there listening, all you need is Jesus. Really, all you need is Jesus, because he's the one who will get you through. Yes, you can use, uh, you can practice how to cough right. You can practice how to... Uh, wash your hands and you can practice social distancing but at the end of the day if Jesus ain't for you, you're going under all you need is Jesus now if you don't have him this is your opportunity, I'm going to ask everybody to repeat the salvation prayer with me loud enough to hear their own voice and believe it in your heart as my wife said confess with your mouth, believe in your heart let us uh, pray the salvation prayer pray with me now, say God, God. I'm sorry for my sins I'm sorry for my sins I believe, I believe you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus into the earth in a human body, son of God, in the body of the son of man. You let him live without sin. You let him die to pay for sin. You raised him from the dead to prove he conquered sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I promise to love and serve you forever. Because of my belief and confession, 
I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I know that there are a lot of you. I'm looking at a lot of members of the church. And I know that there are a lot of saved folk here. But if that was the very first time you prayed that prayer out loud and you meant it in your heart, raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you're saved and you know it, will you stand up, please? Don't lie. If you're saved and you know you're saved, if you know that you would go to heaven, if God forbid if you were to die today, if you know for sure that you would go to heaven, don't lie now. Don't stand up if you're not sure. If you're not sure that Jesus, because I'm not playing, I need to know who's saved up in here today. All right, I want to make sure. All right. Well, praise God for the household of faith. Give God some praise. Amen. All right. Amen. All right, now at this time, at this time while you are yet standing, uh, uh, we're going to do two things. First of all, does anybody need a good church home? Just be kind of nice, baby, please. Anybody need a good church home? Anybody not have a good church home or a good pastor? Raise your hand. If you're not a member of a local church, raise your hand. If you're not a member of a local church, raise your hand. Is there one? You young men back there, you have a church home? You have a pastor? You all have a church home and a pastor. You two young men. Huh? You do? Huh? No. Who is this young man right here? That's what I'm not talking to. Yeah. Who's your pastor? Well, then you need to come on up here. Come here, son. You just getting tall and, and big and kind of. God bless you. Yeah, he's just 